Hey guys, welcome back. Pretty much since its inception, modding has been a core component of the Halo franchise, and although support for the modding scene since 2004 has been, well, at best lackluster, uh, but primarily just completely non-existent, that never stopped any modders from bringing their Halo dreams to life, primarily using Halo Custom Edition. Now, thanks to 343's continued support of MCC and their promise that more is on the way for the modding community, it looks like this modding support blackout is finally coming to an end, thank god. However, it is going to be quite some time before this new age of Halo modding finally begins. But thankfully, we've got something pretty big to hold us over. One of the biggest, longest running and most well-known Halo mods of all time just got even bigger. Today, we're diving into Halo SPV 3.3. So, I've made quite a few videos over the years about SPV 3 and its various updates, but for those who don't know what it is, let me give you a quick rundown. Single Player Version 3, or SPV 3 for short, is a gigantic overhaul of Halo Combat Evolved's campaign, designed primarily for people who have already played CE and want more. Existing levels are expanded with new areas, encounters, objectives and scenarios. New levels entirely are added, ranging from a totally overhauled version of the Silent Cartographer, to the Flood Assault on Alpha Base that is briefly mentioned in Halo the Flood, and even a mission where you play as the Arbiter attempting to contain the Flood outbreak, set on the Silent Cartographer Island. Entirely new enemies are added. Brutes, skirmishers, jackal snipers, sentinel enforcers, infected jackals, infected blind wolves, and more. And with them, a wealth of new weapons as well. Some from future Halo games like the BR and the SMG, along with new ones like the Particle Carbine, the Shredder, and many, many more. Armor abilities have been added, including health regen, visor, speed boots, and sprint, which, yes, although quite controversial, I will say he's actually quite fun. Um, sprint in this game actually gives you quite a cool melee buff where if you melee whilst you're sprinting, you do double damage and also send enemies flying, which is, I'll be honest, really damn satisfying. And then the previous SPV3 update even incorporated another well-known custom CE campaign, Lemoria, which you can play alongside the standard or the standard SPV3 version of the Combat Evolved campaign. To cut it short, SPV3 is absolutely massive. It changed Combat Evolved in so many ways that it almost feels odd to call it a Combat Evolved mod because in many ways it feels like a totally different experience and it really goes out of its way to, to be that. If you're looking for a mod that still really resembles Combat Evolved but has a few minor additions here and there, then SPV3 ain't for you. This is a total overhaul in every way, shape and form and its latest update took this long-standing beast of a mod even further down that path. However, before we depart down said path, the most iconic sponsor of all has returned to sponsor today's video, Audible. Start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial and get full access to thousands upon thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts in the Plus catalog. Just visit audible.com slash hidden Xperia or text hidden Xperia to 500 500. Now is the perfect time to start an Audible trial. Halo Point of Light, which continues the story of 343 Guilty Spark, is releasing in a few weeks. And not only is the art done by a great friend of mine, Pixel Flare, who also did all of my channel art, but the audiobook is voiced by Tim Dadabo, the voice of Guilty Spark. It is sure to be a spicy story, and if you sign up for a free trial, you get one credit every month to redeem any title in their premium section for free to keep forever. Or, you know, if that doesn't take your fantasy, then how about Shadows of Reach? What's looking to be a semi-prequel to Halo Infinite featuring Chief, Blue Team, and the Banished on Reach itself. Or how about an incredibly iconic Johnson story written by the man, the myth, the legend, Joe Staten himself, Contact Harvest. Audible is packed full of Halo audiobooks to listen to while working, while working out, while gaming, or while just chilling and waiting for Halo Infinite. 
and new members can even try Audible for 30 days on us. It really is a Halo lore fan's paradise. So, what are you waiting for? Dive into some Halo lore today by going to audible.com slash hiddenxperia, or by texting hiddenxperia to 500, 500 to start your free Audible trial today. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring the video, and let's return to SPV 3.3. Right, let's start off with the levels of SPV 3.3. One of the main additions to the game overall in this update is the general restoration of cut content from pre-release versions of Combat Evolved. This includes cut dialogue, cut encounters, cut skyboxes, and more. These expand existing levels such as the Pillar of Autumn and Halo, play into new encounters and really fit in nicely alongside existing CE dialogue, and also dialogue from other Halos as well that's been kind of retroactively added, notably dialogue from Halo 2 and Halo 4 that is reused in a really fitting fashion. I'll be honest, I'm a sucker for cut content in games and so being able to experience Combat Evolved kind of in a way that Bungie at some point during development wanted you to experience it is a really nice and really welcome addition, so massive props to the team for adding these features. One of these features in particular, the modified skyboxes, can really alter the atmosphere of levels as well. As a part of the new customization features, which we're going to get to in a minute, you can change the skybox of the silent cartographer from dawn to midday, and also the skybox of Halo from the kind of standard foggy skybox to a really aesthetic galactic skybox, which apparently is how Bungie had it in an earlier build of Combat Evolved. There's also the addition of some new weapons as well. If you manage to take out a Sentinel Enforcer, one of the big boys, then much like the Aggressor Sentinels, you can take their primary weapon, an Incineration Cannon. Now, the Incineration Cannon in SPV3 functions kind of differently to how it functions in Halo 4 and Halo 5. It's basically a flame-based rocket launcher that is really effective, as it should be, against the Flood. And then there's the updated Piercer. Now, the Piercer was an entirely new brute weapon that basically functioned as a spike pistol that was added to SPV3 a couple updates ago now. Basically, it acts as like a small burst fire spike pistol, but now it's been entirely reworked to function pretty much like the Halo Infinite Mangler. Essentially, a high damage, low fire rate spike based hand cannon. And then, to tie all of these new updates and existing experiences together, are the various graphical updates. So, lighting in general has seen massive improvements, including the addition of ray tracing and also better HDR. These, along with the dynamic visor effects like raindrops resting on it, really, really immerse you in the environments that you're fighting in. A great example of this is the 343 Guilty Spark Swamp that now looks and feels extra spooky thanks to how all of these new effects tie in together, and it just creates a far more immersive and, dare I say, kind of even realistic experience compared to the standard vanilla experience. These effects are also used to great effect to really build specific atmospheres on certain missions that really do differ from one another. For example, Halo has this really kind of wondrous effect to it that complements your first time being on a Halo ring and really makes you feel like you're exploring something that's located in a truly alien part of space. But then, you have the more that really tries to drive home a horror atmosphere. The mission features an extreme emphasis on darkness, and I, I mean extreme, which you know, kind of canonically does make sense given that all the lights were out in the Pillar of Autumn, and this causes you to have to really rely on any form of lighting you can find to navigate through the maze-like corridors. Your flashlight, your sword, flares left by the now infected marines on the floor, grenades, or even the muzzle flash of your weapon. At times it can feel like a bit too much, like there were a few instances where I was literally just stumbling around in the pitch black dark running into wars and stuff, but at the same time I feel like that was kind of the point, that was kind of like what the team were trying to get across with the mission, so I don't necessarily think that that's a design flaw, it just it really does put an emphasis on how important even tiny sources of light are, which I think is a really unique gameplay mechanic quite honestly. Illuminating corridors of flood with nothing but your muzzle flash creates this kind of like fantastic strobe light horror effect, which 
I think is really cool. It almost makes the flood look kind of stop motiony, which to me is really creepy and it really helps build the horror atmosphere of the level. And what little lighting the environments do have really build into that and create this fantastic sense of dread with the colors that are used. Like this area, for example, that is just pitch black and red has this really ominous vibe to it. I love it. Overall, SPV 3.3 really doubles down on the changes made to Halo Combat Evolved's campaign by previous iterations of the mod, which leads to a truly unique experience that is honestly unlike any other Halo campaign overhaul mod out there. It's something that I think you're either going to love or you're going to hate, so try it out for yourself and see what you think. But these changes are just the tip of the iceberg for this update. As I mentioned a minute ago, SPV 3.3 brings with it customization features for campaign. So, on top of the time of day customization, you can now customize how Chief and Cortana look in the campaign. Chief's options include the standard Mark V, a bunch of Mark V variants from SPV 3 and various other Halo CE mods, and also a full ODST BDU, which I personally opted for. Honestly, Going through the campaign as an ODST and seeing an ODST in all of the cutscenes was so damn cool and added a nice bit of flavour to cutscenes and a campaign that I've already experienced like well over a thousand times at this point. And then for Cortana, you can give her various different appearances ranging from SPV3 models to the regular Combat Evolved Cortana model, both of which can come in a variety of different colours, but also you can give her her um should we say, her iconic Windows 10 look. Yes, you can quite literally change Cortana's model to her Windows 10 AI assistant icon, which looks about as hilarious and just downright strange in the cutscenes as you can imagine. But last, <laughs> and absolutely not least for customization, we have the Peace de la Resistance, the absolute apex of Halo customization that I don't think Infinite is going to come even close to topping. Is something wrong? No, nothing. Craig mode. The perfect blend of big head mode and everyone's favourite neighbourhood poorly rendered brute. Craig. This feature is just beautiful, honestly. Truly, truly remarkable. Bravo to all who made this a reality. <clears throat> okay, so to get back on track a little bit, another big addition that came with this update is the introduction of schools. 15 schools to be precise, almost all of which, maybe besides one or two, are totally new to Halo and offer unique and often far more difficult ways to play the campaign. I'm not going to go through all of the schools individually, but they offer some really cool playstyles when combined in certain ways. For example, if you enable the Fog Skull, the ODST Skull, and also equip the ODST BDU, you're essentially recreating the more grounded and ODST suited gameplay experience of Halo 3 ODST in SPV3's campaign, which is a pretty nice little touch. It's a very different way to re-experience a campaign that you've probably already played before. However, schools also play a large role in what is arguably the biggest feature edition of SPV 3.3, Firefight. But not just any firefight. You've got your regular old UNSC versus Covenant firefight, but then you've also got a very welcome addition, Flood Firefight. Right now, Firefight is playable on two maps, which are just scenarios pulled from the campaign, as Firefight maps always were. There's the Rock Slide map from Halo and the Engine Room map from the Moor, and they both come with a bunch of different modes as well. There's Regular Survival, Squad Survival, where you have a squad of ODSTs that you have to defend and you only fail if they all die, and Juggernaut, where you're given all of the unlocks and weapon drops from the start, but only one life. Each mode also has a number of unique difficulty options as well that alter the number of waves you have to survive and also how frequently new schools are enabled. In addition to weapon drops, you can also get hero drops as well, which play into SPV 3.3's new hero feature that I probably should have mentioned earlier. These heroes are characters who are basically invincible and go into a downed state when they take too much damage that requires you to revive them. Basically, think Halo 5's revive system, but with no stupid gimmicky quicktime event. 
These hero characters include Johnson, Chief, Keys, who comes armed with a golden magnum, and Fohammer, who comes armed with a reach grenade launcher. And there are also some other ones as well from the Lemuria campaign. These really spice up your allied forces in Firefight and give a kind of twist to having AI on your side. The variety of loadouts and weapons, including some new weapons that are entirely unique to Firefight, offers a fair bit of replayability despite the fact that there's only two maps. And Flood Firefight in particular feels so fresh and honestly really different to regular Firefight. I love how the atmosphere of the map is different if it's Flood that you're fighting. It kind of just makes everything feel a bit more foreboding and immersive, which, you know, are two things that are pretty great when fighting the Flood. And these are feelings that are only enhanced when you and your ODSTs start getting swarmed as more and more Flood pods fall from the sky. It's a really nice twist on regular Firefight that I personally find to be far more enjoyable. And Honestly, I still have no idea why no Halo game outside of Halo Wars 2 has done any form of, like, Flood Firefight yet, honestly. I, I don't, I really don't get it. The Flood are just perfect for a wave-based survival mode. Why has it not happened yet? I, uh. I definitely recommend installing SPV 3.3 purely for the Firefight, honestly. I reckon that you'll really like the variety that it brings to traditional Firefight, with the new enemies and the weapons and the heroes and stuff like that. There are some pretty damn cool weapons and also weapon variants in here to use against hordes of coveys and also Flood. And speaking of installing SPV 3.3, no longer do you have to go through the rigmarole of having to install the ancient, dusty 2003 version of Halo CE PC to play SPV 3. You can now play SPV 3 as long as you have Halo CE in the MCC on either Steam or the Windows Store installed, so no more having to torrent a two decade old game and then go hunting for a CD key. Just one thing to note though, you don't actually play SPV3 in MCC, you still boot it from the SPV3 shortcut that is created when you install the game, it just uses the CE maps in MCC instead of the maps in Halo CE PC, if that makes any sense. One fantastic feature of this mod that I've got to mention, it's not new to this version of the mod, but I would be remiss not to mention it, is the music. Jafet Mazer, who is an absolutely incredible Halo artist and also Halo musician, made basically remix versions of all of Marty and Michael's soundtrack pieces from Combat of Old for this mod, and it's fantastic. The music for this mod is so damn good, you will love it, I can absolutely guarantee. And so, the final thing that I want to touch on in this update is a returning feature from the original Halo Combat Evolved, the credits. Now, for some peculiar reason, all of the Halo games in the Master Chief Collection scrubbed their original credits, which means that none of the Bungie members who actually made the games in the first place are mentioned or credited at all in MCC, as far as I'm aware. But SPV 3.3, brought back the original CE credits, along with also the secret post-credits Guilty Spark scene, which, believe it or not, I actually had no idea existed until a few months ago. And so, that's it. All of the newest features coming to Halo's biggest mod ever in SPV 3.3. The link to the SPV Discord, where the download links can be found, is in the description below, so make sure you give this mod a try. With how bright the future of Halo modding is, I mean, even before 343 released official mod tools, thanks to a model importing tool that was created by a guy called Forerunner for Halo Reach, Halo 3, and Halo 4, as you can see, I have a feeling that these modding videos are going to become a semi-regular thing again, or at least I hope they do. Seeing some of the things that people have already managed to do with this model importing tool in Halo Reach have absolutely blown my mind, like... Seeing this stuff actually in the flesh is its crazy, because this is the stuff that we've dreamt about with modding for Halo for years, but have never been able to do. And then here it is. Here's a Banished Scarab in Halo Reach. Here's custom weapon models. And I, I cannot wait to make entire videos about things that people manage to do with this tool. I can't wait. But with that said, that's all for today. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons, as per usual, for the support over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.